Uh, anyway, I'm uh, here, uh, as uh, Christina said, uh, Julia Leyen can't be here, unfortunately, today. Uh, and Helena Lemendik will actually talk after me, but uh, this will be another presentation. Anyway, we have been uh, thinking about um, these uh, topics together. How can I uh, uh, change the slides? Do I have a clicker or...? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> thanks. Uh, and uh, before I start, uh, two disclaimers, I guess, are necessary. First, I am uh, not an expert on uh, generative AI at all. Uh, I'm going to discuss some things related to ChatGPT and the uh, discussions, huge discussions that we have had over the couple of months now. Uh, but actually, my focus would be on uh, academic writing and how ChatGPT affects the writing itself at the university. So nothing about the technical side of ChatGPT. Um, okay, uh, so what's the discussion about? Uh, since ChatGPT came, I guess uh, the first uh, set of uh, things uh, discussed is related to its uh, capabilities, what it can do, what it is meant for, uh, why it can do things that it does. So basically it can uh, write things for us if we prompt it to do so. Um, so the second uh, discussion area, I guess, is more related to universities or education in general. So how ChatGPT uh, and uh, tools similar to this affect teaching and learning. And uh, at the moment, I know at least uh, at the University of Tartu, there have already been some uh, uh, surveys uh, among faculty members. Uh, we have collected, uh, not we, like we, but uh, people at Tartu have collected uh, faculty members' opinions about ChatGPT and uh, what they think, how it might affect teaching and learning and what are the problems. But uh, this survey was actually not about writing. So it was a more general uh, survey and uh, I guess uh, things related to academic integrity, plagiarism and uh, so on were also included there. But I know um, teachers uh, at the University of Tartu have also already tried this tool with the students and uh, done many th interesting experiments and have given assignments where they ask students to use it and then uh, reflect, uh, ask students to reflect on their exper uh, experience. So Krista Lepik actually had a really interesting talk about this. Uh, and this uh, discussion session is actually available online uh, at the University of Tartu e-learning uh, journal or something, web journal. So if anyone is interested, in, uh, interested, I can share the link later. And of course, uh, teachers at the secondary school uh, have uh, already tried this and uh, discussed uh, how it might affect students. And uh, Kiriant, uh, specific genre that uh, we usually write at schools. So, uh, why we want to discuss it uh, is because we think that uh, in the context of academic writing, uh, ChatGPT and its uh, impact has not been discussed so much yet, and how it uh, affects what uh, we as uh, researchers and teachers of academic writing do, uh, what kind of uh, methods or strategies we have to adapt in order to live with it effectively. So um, our one question that we have actually is how uh, effective ChatGPT is with uh, Estonian? Can it generate good? Good because we don't really know what good is or what's the objective criteria for good. That's the question. Anyway, we suspect that the texts that ChatGPT gives at the moment are very much reflecting the English writing tradition. 
uh, or this uh, Anglo-American writing tradition. Um, of course, some features are overlapping uh, with Estonian academic texts, of course, but uh, at the moment we don't have this understanding or this good understanding about Estonian academic text or how it differs from uh, English, for example. And so we don't actually know how well ChatGPT generated texts uh, respond to this Estonian tradition overall. Um, of course, the second uh, problem uh, is uh, related with assessment uh, uh, of those uh, student uh, works. Uh, how we should approach the assessment now when we know that this uh, uh, powerful tool is available for students. Um, also, this assessment is um, <coughs> related to knowledge construction, how students uh, get from their ideas to the written piece and what role ChatGPT might have there and how we can uh, teach or guide students to use it uh, so that it's not a problem for academic integrity and plagiarism and yeah, considering those larger uh, ethical questions. Uh, yeah, so basically a larger question, what we can do as practitioners, as teachers, as researchers to uh, help students to use it and uh, to improve our own practices. So, um, maybe let's uh, begin with the model, because at our project, Be Right project, where we study um, academic texts in uh, Estonian, Latvian and Lithuanian, we have um, generated a model based on uh, extensive lit review, and uh, at the moment we have five features of academic texts in the model. These features are rhetorical structure, argument, stance, authorial presence, and coherence, cohesions, cohesion. And all these uh, features actually have three uh, different uh, levels, uh, micro, micro, and meso level. So uh, to get a good academic text, the writer has to have some kind of implicit knowledge. I, I don't know if a writer has to have this knowledge, but somehow those features will uh, in the end reflect in students' texts and we as researchers can then see uh, those, those things in the text. So the question is uh, how well those five features uh, in all those uh, sub-levels, uh, how well they are reflected uh, in ChatGPT generated text and uh, would those actually be different in English uh, and Estonian, for example, or English, German, French, Estonian, whatsoever. So we, our larger goal is to make this model uh, available for other languages as well, to be used to study their own tradition. Uh, but yeah, maybe this is like for background good to keep in mind when we think about the uh, ChatGPT generated text. So uh, yeah, the global in uh, inspection, or global perspective. At first, we thought that maybe it would be interesting to try to see the text from ChatGPT and compare them with those real texts. But actually, it's like a huge wave, and we can't uh, you know fight with this. Uh, and it would be kind of pointless to just generate the text and then analyze them because the text you uh, prompt from ChatGPT is so much dependent on the prompt itself that there is so much variation and based only on few texts we can't say anything. So this is something uh, for future research to solve. We won't say anything about the real differences of ChatGPT texts and uh, real uh, human written text. Uh, but what we would like to focus more is the meta-level understanding that is necessary for students or whoever writes a text. Uh, this meta-level understanding that is necessary to understand what a good writing or good text is, what a good text should look like. And um, yeah, um, our hypothesis is that if you really want to get a good or excellent text from ChatGPT, 
of course, you have to know how to write the prompt, how to get the right keywords into into the prompt, so it uh, can give you a good good text. But um, as a student, maybe uh, you might not be an expert yet, because that's why you go to the university. You want to study how to be an expert, and of course, you are not an expert on uh, academic writing as well. So uh, to have all this meta-level understanding about the uh, form, the formal issues or the structural issues, also the tone, what kind of uh, meta discourse markers the text, uh, a good text should have, what kind of structure should uh, should the text fo uh, ha follow, Imrat structure introduction methods results discussion or would it be okay if it followed some kind of other structure so when a student really <laughs> wants to go there and get the text uh, all this uh, meta level knowledge would be important the problem is i guess that um, it's not taught too much at the moment so um, uh, helena will talk uh, uh, about the instructions that uh, students are given at the university when they have to write something. And I, I guess that uh, those um, larger or more general aspects about writing uh, do not reflect on those instructions. So the question is, uh, how do students know? Or how should they know? And do they know? And w we think that they actually do not know so much. Uh, yeah, then if a student gets a text from ChatGPT, uh, there's this question of assessment, how it uh, assesses the text, whether it's good or not, uh, based on those uh, text features that we showed. And also, uh, I guess, what, um, what is good for our uh, perspective as teachers, that uh, this uh, effect of overconfidence might also work with students, or not only with students, but with everyone. So if someone gets a text from ChatGPT and is not an expert on, on text uh, itself, then uh, she might think that it's good enough to send it to teachers. Uh, or uh, yeah, But it might actually not be the best text, and there might be things to improve. Uh, yeah, if you are overconfident, if you are not an expert in this yet, then you might not know how to do it, how to, how to make it better. So, of course, uh, things related to overconfidence uh, are two, uh, two aspects. In addition to those uh, textual aspects, of course, the content is important. So, uh, this is something that I haven't uh, talked yet uh, about, but uh, of course, uh, I guess we all know that ChatGPT generated text might be totally wrong or they hallucinate and the content might not be true. So, you have to, uh, again, this uh, expertise comes into play. You have to know what uh, do you want to be in your text and whether <coughs> the things that ChatGPT generated for you is it uh, true or is it uh, is it not true the problem with references as well and these are also questions that uh, Krista Lepic discussed in in her uh, presentation at this Tartu University discussion session but yeah with references as well for example you, you might think that it's so easy to go there and uh, prompt uh, GPT and get the text, but uh, the references it, it, it gives you are totally random. They might be true, they might not be true, but even if they are true references, then if you don't have this deeper knowledge about the field uh, that you should write about, then how can you decide whether these references are actually good for that specific task. Maybe they are not uh, very influential or very relevant in, in this uh, particular topic at all. So if you do not um, think about it more deeply as a student, then it's probably not good for your um, result. And of course, uh, what implications it has for Teachers of academic writing, uh, first, I guess, uh, it's uh, uh, stress. It's important to stress that uh, what is important in the 
uh, course of writing, why we give students writing tasks is that the learning itself is important. So what students do when they write, actually they learn. And uh, so th the goal is not to get a text from students. I guess no teacher wants to just uh, create texts, but they want their students to get something from this writing. So if uh, students uh, write themselves, uh, this is uh, like deeper learning. They hopefully can uh, integrate this knowledge into their own ex experience and use it later when they write those ideas too and think about it. Uh, we might hope that they don't forget it too soon. So, so that's why we have to think about the writing assignments that we give to our students and uh, uh, the process-oriented writing approach has been something uh, that's uh, around in uh, English-speaking uh, countries, I guess, and universities. But uh, at uh, Tartu and I guess uh, other institutions uh, in, in Estonia as well, this is something rather new. We don't, I mean, when I uh, started my PhD studies, no one uh, taught me how to write academic texts, uh, subject like academic writing was not in my curriculum. So we have been slowly moving to this uh, process-oriented writing and uh, things are getting better. But uh, yeah, and now with ChatGPT, these uh, things should be taught more and uh, better learning assignments should be developed uh, in every course, not in only academic writing course. And of course, um, yeah, the question of uh, disciplinarity is important here because, uh, as research has uh, shown, uh, not all disciplines write the same. There are actually rather big differences uh, across, for example, uh, medicine or uh, social studies or uh, physics or uh, linguistics. So those disciplinary uh, knowledge related aspects are also important and uh, we don't know how ChatGPT uh, responds to those questions. So, yeah, we suggest that uh, we should acknowledge more the importance of writing as a social act, writing as a thing for learning. Uh, when we think about the process versus product, we shouldn't focus on the product, we shouldn't uh, assess too much or uh, yeah, the students themselves shouldn't think too much about the final grade that they gave. give. And uh, yeah, this process-oriented uh, writing approach is even more important now. And in the context of uh, process-oriented writing, actually it's uh, not a problem that we have a tool uh, like ChatGPT now, because it can be he really helpful for students, for example, when you think about writer's block and sphere of uh, white empty paper, uh, it's a perfect tool for students to avoid this this stress, for example. And uh, yeah, there is a really cool essay from uh, Chris Sanson and uh, Les Perelman uh, from 2017. Uh, since I had to send the slides on Monday already, there is a wrong year, but it's yeah, 2017 and they actually discuss why human are bad machines or why we shouldn't uh, rely on uh, human assessment only but also uh, why machines are bad assessments of uh, written tasks so really interesting uh, and their uh, final conclusion is also that we shouldn't focus on assess assessing student writing but rather uh, supporting the process and uh, we should help the students to uh, yeah, think, th think uh, better what they want to write about and uh, uh, help them to learn new things. And so this uh, writing is only a tool for this. And uh, yeah, so why this topic is important, I guess, right now in uh, Estonian media, what we have seen quite a lot is those frightening uh, uh, articles about how uh, uh, yeah, AI will uh, cancel the written uh, formats of 
anything related in academic written uh, research, written student essays, so now AI will do everything. But uh, actually, uh, we shouldn't uh, frighten people with this, but learn how to live with this and uh, learn how to use the best techniques and practices that we can get from here. So, yeah, this uh, presentation wasn't planned as a research-based uh, presentation. We didn't have any data, we didn't analyze anything, we just discussed something and now we invite you to participate in the discussion. If you have any reflections or thoughts or fears about ChatGPT, it would be interesting to hear them. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm, for, for some reason, looking at Detmar because I'm thinking that he might maybe have a comment. <laughs> wait, 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 just a second. <laughs> I think we'll have a general discussion. But what's, what's interesting is that, of course, we also in our university started a committee on discussing um, what the conclusions are, so how should the university deal, deal with it. And it's very interesting, just like you said, it's not just that it's hard to uh, discuss it technically is also, I'm not sure that the technical side is really as key as the points that you've raised because what does it mean for our assessment? So while I share your conclusions that let's focus on the process and uh, not the product and there's a nice um, thing that my colleague always shows that be a learner, not a finisher. Um, these kind of slogans, they're all good, but what do we then do with assessment? So uh, it's interesting that um, um, there is a reason that um, schools have grades. They have a massively motivating <laughs> impact. And um, if you ever try to teach a kid something that won't be on the test, you will see what happens if there is nothing being assessed. So I think the challenge we have to face is how do we communicate the message you showed here to the people who are actually the stakeholders and who are um, yeah, part of a, a formal um, training system in school and university so what does it then mean for assessment, considering that what we'd like to achieve is what you showed, but what are the ways to get there? And I think one thing that we concluded was we need to monitor the process. So to uh, end this uh, comment or question on a positive note, um, uh, do you think that my impression is that since uh, more things are in digital mode, we have a lot more access to process information so we can see when, what are the steps in rewriting a text where before we just got a piece of paper, we corrected it, gave it mm -hmm. back to them, get another piece of paper. Now you could do keystroke logging mm -hmm. and who knows yeah. what. But is then the solution learning analytics? You know, the, basically following the learning rather than, so to end on the question, is the solution to chat GPT in higher education and school um, digital data about learning processes, which we then use instead of product assessment? Yeah, uh, I guess I personally don't have a good answer here, but uh, yeah, focusing on the process and the assessing the process is actually one solution that uh, uh, Chris Hansen and uh, Beryl Bach, or what was the name, also uh, offered. And it's, uh, as I said, uh, we have technical tools, we, we can monitor it quite easily. Uh, so uh, the threat, I guess, what we face here also, uh, is that we don't want to assess the process superficially. So if we have only technical tools, then it might be also the case like with writing assessment with technical tools, that it's only like on the surface level and we don't know how deep the learning actually was well, or how is the learning like uh, actual or is it only pretended yeah. learning? And that means in a sense what you're um, pointing at I think is a very important observation, namely uh, we then need reporting tools, so-called dashboards. So then teachers need teacher dashboards that allow you to monitor the progress in a way that aggregates the data so that because if you think about, you know, hundreds of people are doing learning processes, you know, what, how are you going to intervene as teacher? But that means we need to then develop or have people develop for us tools that allow us to monitor as educators the learning process in a way that aggregates the information so that it becomes actionable for the educators. Well, uh, thinking about the uh, assessment of the process, I guess, uh, but my impression is that we, we shouldn't maybe focus only on, on the process 
assessing the process. I mean, it's not bad if we assess the final product as well. And if, if this is the concern or problem for the policymakers, then it shouldn't be, because we can assess the final product as well. Only that uh, we can't assess it without this information about the process. So if we know that the process was there and it was like, real, it wasn't ChatGPT generated stuff, then assessing the uh, product is, is also important in, in that case, yeah. I, I think we should continue this discussion uh, during our break because we have a next presentation coming and now I will switch to Estonian because this is in Estonian. Yeah, thank you, Helen. <laughs>